I found out I was pregnant in December 2016. My daughter was probably around two at the time. About six months into my pregnancy, the doctor diagnosed me with an incompetent cervix. The risk is that the baby would try and come out um, at a seven month mark. So they told me that I was vulnerable to an infection. I went on full bed rest, but then more problems started to arise. Chills was the very first symptom that just came about. I was also experiencing body aches. So all those happened within like five, 10 minutes. It was so rapid, everything was so quick that there was no time to really do anything or think anything. Between the chills and the baby not moving, that's when I got very concerned and that's when I was like, all right, let's go to the ER. And they took me to the labor and delivery department. And the first thing I do remember they wanted me to do was a urine sample. I couldn't urinate at all. And then all of a sudden, I, I couldn't breathe. I felt like I was suffocating. My blood pressure was dropping. Um, oxygen was needed, ASAP. Uh, doctors, nurses had to rush in. and think there was a code called. Code sepsis, ICU. Because everything was declining on me. All my, my organs was declining and baby's heartbeat was already gone at that point. And that's when they gave me the difficult news about the baby not making it. It, it was hard. It was hard to take it in. And after that, though, things didn't get any better you know, because Kaylee was not doing well. And it's almost like she was going downhill pretty quickly. Everybody was starting to look like a blur. They did a CAT scan on her first. Her doctor told me that she went into septic shock. From being a healthy young woman, um, never had any complications before, and then next thing you know, she's induced in a coma, holding on to life. It's all within a few hours. They had to do everything they could to support the major organs. So they had to use multiple vasopressors to keep the blood flow within the lungs and the, the heart and the brain. The result of that was that her limbs, more importantly, were suffering. And we could see it you know, pretty vividly in her fingers. Her hands you know, were turning black and starting to shrivel. It was just a, an ultimate sacrifice, really, to, to save her life. After two weeks, when they brought me out of the coma, my vision wasn't clear at all, but I could hear my mom on my left, I could hear my husband. And they keep telling me I'm smiling. I mean, I couldn't see them, but <laughs> I knew they were there. I couldn't move the fingers, I couldn't move the feet, I could lift the arm a little bit, but I couldn't move the fingers. They were very jet black, puffy, and they f felt weird and uncomfortable. My surgeon did explain that amputation was going to be needed to save my life. The amputation was two days apart, meaning the arms first. Two days later, then it was the legs. After they did all the surgeries, all four limbs was bandaged up. It took a long while. I was in some pain, but they kept that under control with the pain medication and nerve medication because I started feeling what they would call phantom pains, and I was feeling the fingers and the feet, but they weren't there. They had like the psychologist come just to see how I was doing mentally, because of course it's now a life-changing thing that's just happened. I was in the hospital for three months. The rehab wasn't easy. I had to lift my arm, lift my leg, and I was in pain some of those times. So I just figured each day I'd do a little bit more than I did the day before. I have a very strong faith, and I just believe I can just keep going. I just believe I can just still do all things. So I just have to strengthen myself each day and just keep telling myself, yes, I can. So basically a little positive dude in my brain telling me, yes, you can, just keep on going. Slower speed, but you get there. So right now I have my two prosthetic legs and then I have my arm with a hook. So currently they are working with me for a hand, which is a functional myoelectric, just to help me do some more things, doing physical therapy. And then occupational is helping me with my core so I can get the trunk straight to stand up so I can walk. Okay, well, the one thing I know that I can't do that I used to do with my daughter is her hair. That's the main thing for me. So every day I still try and comb it, but putting it in a style, I can't do any of those. I told her initially that when mommy gets her legs, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dance with you. So. 
I will take a little steps and dance with her. So when I talk to other women, my advice would just be more vigilant um, to what's going on. Go to the ER, don't wait, because it could happen to anyone, and very quickly. My hubby is beyond being supportive. He's just amazing, because he helps with everything, everything. She's been a huge inspiration to myself. I always saw great potential in her, you know, even if she didn't see it in herself. <laughs> I guess you can say I'm like her biggest encourager. You know, it's great to have family. You feel like you have a, a fortress around you that's going to protect you while you're on your journey and doing the things you have to do. The combination uh, of my faith and my mental toughness and my very supportive family um, is what keeps me going, keeps me moving. And it's a lovely thing, and I'm blessed to have all three. <laughs> Can't stop. Can't give up. Thank you.